We're opening another loot box today, and I promise it's not another voice line. So today we're taking on Hanzo's bow from Overwatch. Now, this might seem like a very ambitious prop, and, and hey, maybe it is, uh, but we'll see if we can make it a little bit more simple with the materials that we choose. I'm thinking we're gonna use pink insulation foam to fill up a lot of that body mass with a couple EVA foam wraps for some of those extra shapes. And for the ends, I've got a piece of uh, PVC foam that we can cut up into strips and hopefully heat form into the shape that we want them. Apart from that, we'll just need to make an arrow, we'll string this all together with an electrical cord, and I'll probably get like sick tats across half my body to keep it like nice and honorable. We've got some very large templates to work with here. If we did this right, the bow should be just over four feet long in total. If we look at the side view, I've notched a couple areas to allow for that EVA foam to wrap and fold over. And down here, I've actually modified the handle area so that we can put a piece of PVC right through the entire thing and really strengthen up that area where we'll be holding it. We've also got a front view of the bow just to keep everything accurate as we continue to shape it. And just in case, I've got a lot more templates to work with here. And actually, this will be really useful because we can keep cutting out smaller segments to use for those uh, EVA templates. All right, our pattern is traced onto the insulation foam and assuming that this doesn't fall apart, we're gonna take a pass and cut it down to a more manageable size and then come back in and cut out the pieces very nicely. When you're doing this, please remember to wear a mask because this puts off some pretty dank fumes and I don't want anybody passing out. So, let's give it a shot. Our basic body shape is now cut out and we can start shaping it with some other tools. I've got a wood rasp here that I'm gonna to use to start knocking down materials, especially on the limbs to kind of round things out. This takes off a lot of material, so you don't wanna to go too heavy. We've got a piece of 220 grit sandpaper to really, really smooth things out. And you'll see the spots where the wire has skipped around as we did the hot wire foam cutting, that will all go away. It's really, really forgiving. We've got a filing kit just to get into some little nooks and crannies uh, wherever we need to. Um, but this is gonna get super dusty, so I'm gonna bring this outside. This is looking more like a thing. I've sanded down every single feature on this. It's getting nice and smooth, and we've cut out our little arrow rest. I've made a couple other cutouts that we're gonna add to the arrow rest area. So we'll bond those in right there, and then we've got this cool bracket that's gonna slice on right back there. I've also modified the handle by drilling a three quarter inch hole through both of these pieces, bonding in a piece of PVC. We're nice and rigid on the handle. Also, this PVC pipe serves as that, that kind of pill bottle shape that comes off the front of the bow. Um, I guess this is like where the dragons come out of. Uh, actually, I think it's like his tracker, but anyway. Uh, so we're gonna put a PVC end cap on there and we've got a, a nice rigid handle. And I think now we're in a good spot to start doing these EVA wraps, so I'll make templates for those as well. The way that I'm gonna do this is by tracing templates onto masking tape that I'll wrap around here. Um, I feel like I saw Bill from Punished Props do this once. Um, Bill, if you're watching, I hope I'm doing this right. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we'll, see, uh, we'll see how we do. Okay. 
We're back outside and all of our EVA foam pieces are cut. Now this stuff was so thin and so soft that I was actually able to get away with using scissors. Um, not usually the case, but hey, if you can do it, go for it. Now if we look at a top view, I'd like to show you the harsh angle on some of these pieces. Now when they wrap around the bow, it'll end up looking pretty straight, but this is why it's important to do that 3D geometric template, or else we wouldn't quite know what angle that needs to be so that it ends up wrapping around nicely around a weird shape. We've made the knock for the string, so that's where you'll actually grip to pull back, and a couple little ornamentation details for that, a few circle cutouts for that bracket, and a few other pieces that look like they're bolt heads that'll go on several places along the bow. I cut out the bow limbs out of PVC foam. I can now use a heat gun to form the PVC foam around the bow, and that should finish out our limbs. We are ready to seal this sucker up. I've got a can of Mod Podge here, and we're gonna coat down all of the foam surfaces. Not worrying about the PVC pipe or the PVC foam end caps. Just really cover all of this really, really well because you don't want the paint that we're gonna use later to start eating up the foam. I'm thinking we're gonna do about four coats of this, and we better get started. <laughs> So with a few coats of Mod Podge on, it looks like I've done nothing, but that's actually the point. Uh, that, that means we did an okay job. So this stuff dries clear, and if you keep putting down layer after layer, it starts to develop just a slight sheen. Um, it fills in a couple of the cracks, but I mean, don't worry, for some of the deep stuff, we're gonna still go in later with Plasti Dip and Primer. So I'm gonna lay down one more coat, and then we will really get to sealing this stuff. So our Mod Podge has had sufficient time to dry, and uh, we can now begin, hold on. Let me take this off so I don't sound like ragtime Darth Vader. Uh, our Mod Podge is now fully dry. We've got a nice sheen coating on this and we are ready to coat it with Plasti Dip. Hey, I want to draw your attention to one spot in particular. When my last layer of Mod Podge started drying, uh, it actually started to bubble up in a few areas and uh, I peeled one of them thinking that, okay, this would be fine. Uh, totally was not fine. It peeled up some foam. So no sweat, I was able to come back in and patch it with some spackle. But what I found worked a lot better is if you just very, very lightly sand some of these areas, you don't have to do nearly as much surface prep. So if you end up having to do that, just no sweat, fill it up, sand it a bit, and then hit it with one uh, slim layer of Mod Podge after that, and then you're good to go. Our first few layers of paint are now on, so I can very carefully peel up the tape before the paint is totally dry. Uh, the tape is coming off very nicely. Yo! Since the details around this handle are so intricate, I'm actually gonna come in and just brush it by hand. So while you've been watching me make the bow, I've also been making the arrow. 
Now for the shaft of the arrow, we've got a wooden dowel that I've silver painted at each end and done a gradient from gold to black right in the midsection. And for the arrow tips and tail feathers, we're gonna hand paint them silver with acrylic paint. Like that, a little super glue, line it up, put it down. So I just stuck these three pieces together with some Super 77 and I'm just hand forming it into a nice little trifecta here. Just kind of bend it around until it looks good. Okay, no more painting. Now that the paint's all dry, we can do our detailed ribbon wrap around these two sections of the bow. To make the ribbon, I've got some blue hockey tape, which I'm gonna lay down, put another piece right on top of it, sticking to itself, and then cut it to the length that I need. Alright, stay with me, we're in the home stretch. To string the bow, I've got some very stretchy black elastic cord that we can string between two points on the gold arm, so we'll need to drill two holes and string it through. good, just a little bit of flexion up in the arms, which is where we want it to flex and not like here where it would break. This was a beast of a build, but I'm really happy with how it turned out and I'm really happy with what we learned along the way. You know, this is one of those builds where if you try to think about all of this at once, you'll go crazy. But I bet that you can figure out one step at a time. You know, you start by thinking of, okay, what's my core made out of? What am I gonna wrap it in? How am I gonna finish it? How am I gonna seal this up? And then what are these fine details going to be? You take it step by step and you can actually figure it out. And when you stick with it, you can actually build anything. So, as always, thank you for watching. I'm Vinny, I'll see you back here next time.